the vulture has a pretty bad reputation. Forever chillin, like a villain. Very funny. A most evil character. So I'm up here in the mountains of Bulgaria, where these guys are the central characters of the story. And they're the good guys, but they're carrying a pretty heavy burden on their wings. You just move the vultures and everybody benefiting from that. Around the world, groups are bringing vultures back, as well as other wildlife from lynxes to beavers, even Eurasian wolves. And the goal is for them to play a key role in mitigating the climate crisis. But how are a few birds supposed to make such a big change? And what does that have to do with the climate? We're living through what's being called the sixth mass extinction, where up to 150 species are going extinct every day. And this loss of biodiversity is already threatening parts of our own existence, from insufficient pollinators to help us grow food, to losing fish that keep water clean. Around the world, many groups are trying to reverse this. And up on that mountain, one of the biggest such projects is underway. I'm in the Vrachansky Balkan Nature Park in Western Bulgaria, accompanying a group of bird handlers. They're working on a potentially game-changing concept called rewilding. Here, it involves releasing vultures into the skies. The idea is for this to have a knock-on effect on the whole ecosystem. We'll get to how that could all work in a minute, but first meet the vulture man in these parts, Christo Peshev, who's doing a PhD on these infamous birds. So how many birds are like actually in this area now? Because the birds move constantly between different reintroduction areas, between different colonies, you cannot never say, but maybe around 100. Ah, yeah? yeah? Out of these like 100 vultures, how many have you released? All the birds that usually live in the area, most of them are released by us. The project began in 2016. Today, 13 young vultures are sitting in an aviary at the top of the mountain, waiting to be released. I mean, they're some of the biggest birds in Europe, but up close, they're massive. And where have they come from? These are native Spanish birds, because they need to adapt. They need to meet the other birds in the area. They need to know the area, so they are watching. They, they are bringing here, and now they start to think of this place like they're and uh, their home. There are four species of vultures in Bulgaria, but the Cinereus vulture and the Griffon vulture are in the aviary today. They're all scavengers, meaning they feed on the bodies of dead animals. The vultures in the Balkan ecosystem go together like bread and butter. The extensive grasslands, wildlife, shepherds and vultures evolved together here over thousands of years, supporting each other. Every time a wild animal or sheep or cow died, the vultures stepped in. Christo's grand-uncle described what it was like in the 1930s. He told me that when there was a dead cow, the whole sky became black from vultures. <laughs> they covered the cow and uh, his uh, grandchildren, when, before we started, this reintroduction was, reintroduction was never seen a vulture. Because things changed. When Bulgaria was under the communist regime in the second half of the century, the state encouraged putting poison in dead sheep so that wolves and other predators that ate them would be wiped out and the shepherds would be protected. But when vultures tried to feed on the carcasses of the poisoned animals, they became the accidental victims. And then a double whammy. Later in the century, the industrialization of sheep farming meant that the once open grazing sheep moved indoors and died indoors, and vultures lost access to a large part of their food supply. These are still huge challenges for the birds, along with hunting. Their population went down from possibly hundreds of thousands of vultures in the 1900s to one breeding pair of griffon vultures and zero cinereus vultures later in the century. So now the team is trying to bring them back, but it's risky. Not every bird released will survive in the face of so many challenges. Christo first picks up a female cinereus vulture. 
a bag over the head keeps her calm and a tag helps him keep a track of her progress but to understand the cascading effect vultures can have on the ecosystem here we've really got to understand what an ecosystem even is and how it functions ecosystem comes from the word the greek word oikos which means household Henrika Schulter to Buna studies conservation science at the Zoological Society of London. So I brought her in to help me out. And I think in ancient Greece that that would include like, you know, the main family and it would um include like servants and slaves and it includes the animals and it includes the houses like the physical structures. Think of it like a network of living species of plants and animals and non-living structural components like soil, the nutrients in it, water and air. each has a role to play let's talk about grasslands so there are some basic principles like plants and grass support animals that eat them like herbivores they graze trample and poop which stimulates the growth of newer healthier grass and it also helps support other species like insects and reptiles but you can't just have herbivores because then they would eat up all the grass So you need carnivores that check the population of the herbivores. Ecosystems are very complex, but generally, when there are a lot of species playing their parts and they all have resources, we call that ecosystem healthy. Energy, nutrients, and water are passed through the system, and these cycles determine how much carbon is absorbed, how much it rains, and the local weather over the long term. AKA, they help determine the climate. Since the last ice age, roughly speaking, there's been the suite of species around and they've always sort of vaguely interacted with the same neighbors species develop ways of coping with drought and they develop ways of coping with like diseases and stuff like that so and that doesn't mean that there might not be like local extinctions but sort of on the whole like things could sort of because you know if you don't develop ways of coping with like climatic extremes and stuff you're no longer going to be here A large number of relationships between diverse species help keep the entire ecosystem from the living to the non-living and the climate stable, healthy and resilient. But as human habitations expand and change habitats, many of these relationships are breaking down. Sometimes that's still okay and the ecosystems cope resiliently, but not always. Let's imagine our ecosystem is like a friendship group and it's five people and all of those five people have like the same kind of level of relationship to all other people and now let's imagine that one of those people goes on holiday for like 8 weeks probably the social activity of that friendship group is not going to alter much because yes one person has left but actually there's a lot of other interaction that happens and now imagine like the same friendship group of five people but there's one person who's like maintaining all the friendships and the other four people have like don't really like each other cuz that happens um and if that person goes on holiday there's going to be zero game games nights like in that friendship group that one friend could be the tiger in a forest ecosystem that keeps the deer in check or our heroes the vultures they're like the local recycling department It's very important they exist to clear up rot which stops the spread of disease. And more importantly for the ecosystem as the birds break down organic matter they send nutrients back into the soil that keeps everything healthy. Here in the Bulgarian grasslands the decline of the vulture has meant that diseases can spread faster and the grassland itself has become weaker. As soil degrades grass is affected. and this effect knocks on to other living and non-living components in the biosphere and this is the big problem globally weaker grasslands and broken cycles impact the climate along with forests croplands and wetlands grasslands in the eu absorb 263 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent per year that's around four and a half times the total annual emissions of bulgaria in 2019 The EU is looking to restore more land to raise that number to over 310 million tons by 2030. Globally, UNEP has called for restoring land the size of Canada over that period. So each release is important. So what do you hope will happen to this bird? I hope that it will be usual, we'll just release it, stay 2-3 days around, 
knowing the surroundings and then meet the other birds on the cliffs and start to live in this area. I step away so the bird can have its space to fly free. It's the moment we've been waiting for. <laughs> A bit underwhelming, but she's off. Apart from vultures in Bulgaria, over 70 countries around the world are now bringing back wildlife, including bison to woodlands, beavers to rivers, and elephants to grasslands. Rewilding, as opposed to conserving a species within a fenced national park or planting trees in a small area, is seen as a low-cost and far-reaching method to restore entire habitats and beyond. With the tracker, Christo watches as the birds visit Romania, Ukraine and even Moscow, potentially setting up new colonies there and cleaning up what needs cleaning. Having more wildlife around also has other social benefits like ecotourism, as well as just admiring their aesthetic beauty. But it's been controversial because it can and has gone very wrong, like it did in a project in the Netherlands. Horses and deer were released, but without predators, they ended up overgrazing shrubs and trees. Wild birds declined and the ecosystem deteriorated, not to mention most grazers starved to death or had to be shot. In other instances, species have been introduced, intentionally and otherwise, which outcompeted and ended up killing local species. The translocation of the desert tortoise in the US caused further declines in population, as they had insufficient support systems. To ensure their survival, the team here have set up vulture restaurants around the country for the now free vultures to visit when they need to, as well as for those still in aviaries. A Michelin star menu for them, and zero stars from me. Christo and I picked up a cow and a sheep that died of natural causes at two nearby farms. It's a nice uh, final resting place for the cow. Of course, eaten by the vultures and bring to the heavens. heavens. I guess this is why everybody thinks these guys are creepy. The restaurants are a temporary solution. The team hopes that farmers will set up their own feeding sites. Partner projects are also introducing red deer into mountains here, so vultures will have enough to eat without human intervention someday. We don't know what happened. What will happen in 100 years, 200 years? Mm. One way is total destruction, cataclysm, global warming, and the other ways we change and we start to live with nature. And if they disappeared now, there is no opportunity for the future generation to, to have uh, nature. They will have nothing. We are the people that's helping for them to survive a little bit more to reach this goal. There are now over 300 vultures in Bulgaria. And last year, the first wild vulture chick was born in 50 years in these mountains. But equally, dozens have ended up being poisoned or died from starvation, exhausted from flying around searching for food. Somewhere up on those cliffs, new birds are slowly settling into their new home, and older ones are probably mating or even having offspring. Or it could all be going completely wrong. So the question is, is all of this effort worth it in the end? Rewilding doesn't guarantee the survival of the species or the systems, but it is a chance to transform entire landscapes and help the climate stay resilient. I never imagined that I would be standing in a field of carcasses where vultures feast, but if you want to join us in more weird and really interesting places, come back and watch every Friday.